Question one. What's the missing number in this pattern? You can see if you follow all of these numbers on the left hand side, these guys here, they are always decreasing by three as you move from left to right. So if you decrease by three one more time, that's what gives you negative three. When you had a look at this next part, it said write a mathematical sentence. So you can see when Brad bought six packets of tennis balls and each packet had five balls in it, that's where six times five comes from. Following that, he lost seven of them, so that's why there is subtraction by seven in the sentence, okay? Following along, and I know there are some questions about this one, uh, question three that is. Part A, I think everyone recognized, 16 is clearly bigger than four. Uh, part B, that fraction sign is just another way to say division, but lots of you have questions about part C. Now let me explain. The real issue is confusion about what that symbol means. Let me read that for you, just in case you cannot remember, because uh, to be fair, it's been a while since we looked at this. That statement means nine times seven is greater than or equal to seven times nine. Now, that is why a lot of you thought, oh, nine times seven is 63, seven times nine, according to the commutative law, is also 63, right? So nine times seven is not bigger than seven times nine but it is greater than or equal to. And that's what that little line down there, which is just like an equal sign, is for. Okay, I know there were lots of questions about that. Okay, um, so I think that sort of answers most of the questions that people have on those. It's a little bit of notation. Now you know it, so relax, okay? I'm gonna skip along to four. You can see Hamish did the long division in the answer column and the bold and italic numbers are the ones that have been filled in. So you can see uh, the four up the top is already there. So what do you do with that four? You multiply it by 19. That's what gives you the 76 that belongs there. And then you continue through and you can see where the rest of this goes from. 91 take away 76, that gives you the 15 and then you bring down that two, that's already told to you. But then you write this last number, eight, because... Because 19 goes, goes into 152 eight times. Perfect, and that was it. Okay, so let's turn over the page. This picture shows a section of a party decoration. So what's going on? There were two marks here, and a lot of you will find there's a tick and a cross, maybe because you demonstrated something, you had some of this kind of working somewhere, but maybe you didn't quite get the final answer, which is 968. So you can see there, uh, and this is just to give you a general guideline, the first mark is for recognizing that you had to do a division, and you had to divide by two. And that's because of how many of the decorations you can fit. It has two stars for every, can you read that? Two stars for every 11 centimeters. Uh, and then it says one mark for multiplying 88 by 11, because that's how many gaps you're going to get. Okay, so two marks there. Number six, without dividing through, how can we tell? So do you remember, this is about the divisibility tests. We have divisibility tests for two, three, four, five, six, etc. So the idea was to say, what you're looking for are the last two digits being divisible. That's the divisibility test for four. Uh, similar answer without performing a long or short division. What's the answer when 137 is divided by 17? If this is what happens when 136 is divided by 17. So you could have given your answer in either of these forms. You could have given it as um, I kind of would have naturally have gone to this one because I got exactly eight when I divide 136. If I add one more on, I get a remainder of one. But you could have written it as a fraction and that was accepted as well. <coughs> okay, uh, by the way, if you didn't notice, this test features our class quite a lot. Uh, Charlie made some chocolate chip cookies. He used the 20 gram chocolate chips rather for every 100 grams. How many chocolate chips did he use? <coughs> okay, can you see the way the working is? Seven times 20 is four times three. 760 grams. Do you follow the working that's there? Yes. You see it? Yeah. Um, if you didn't get that working down, maybe you had a guess. I'd like you to jot that, that line of working down in your book because that sort of guides you as to how to do it. 
Uh, number nine, the biggest issue here was that people didn't quite recognize there's more than one possible number that Frank could be thinking of. A lot of people got 30. Yes, that's possible. But there are other numbers which fit all of the rules that were just mentioned. A little bit like that problem solving activity we did this morning, right? Sometimes there's more than one answer that fits all of the conditions. Okay, number 10, you just needed your protractor to make this measurement here. Uh, number 11, the complement, so that's the difference between your angle and 90 degrees, so you can see the subtraction there. And let's turn over the page. Mark the lines MN and LO to show that they're parallel. So we were looking for uh, these arrows here. You didn't need to have three. If you just had two of them, that was fine. You could put them there or you could put them there. They're okay. Name and angle in question 12, that's adjacent to MPN. So here is MPN right here. That's this angle. So that's why you had some choices as to uh, which one you wanted to say was adjacent to that. Uh, which angle is supplementary? You can read those yourself. <coughs> Question 15, the pair of co-interior angles, you could have said this and this, or you could have said this and this. Do you see what we mean by co-interior? They're in between, they're boxed in by those parallel lines. Uh, question 17, the best people with their answers are here. They drew a clock and they said, okay, at 4 p.m., the minute hand will be at 12, and the hour hand will be, well, let's see here. You'd have 12 here, one, two, three. So four is gonna be over there, pointing downwards, okay? And from that, you could kind of measure out, oh, yep, 120 degrees, because each one of those, I go 30 degrees every time. And that was a tricky question. Number 18, are these angles equal? Yes. And we were looking for this reason here. Now, for both this question and some of the later ones where we were looking for reasoning, we were trying to say, do you know what the relationships between these angles on intersecting lines or parallel lines? Do you know what the words, the language are? So vertically opposite was what we were looking for. Um, there's a symbol missing there, but how do we know they're parallel? You could have used either of these reasons. You could have said corresponding angles or alternative. Okay, let's turn over again. I'm going to skip over 20 because I think it was quite well done or you may have worked it out in your conversations. Let's have a look at 21 because here's where some problems came up. Find the value. So firstly, alpha equals 42, but the, we're trying to focus on the reason, right? So again, we're looking mainly for alternate angles. The rest of it was really helpful, but the main thing we're looking for was alternate angles. And then secondly, for part B, angles on a straight line add to 180. It's not enough to say they're supplementary, even though they are. I want to know why they're supplementary. That's why it says reason, okay? So provide the reasoning, and that's the really important part. 